Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. Welcome to Friday 5pm. Get that beer in a glass and settle in for Brad's tale of woe because he's not having a good Friday. How are you feeling, Brad? Uh, I'm fe- do you know what? I'm feeling a fair bit better than I did yesterday and a fair bit better than I did the day before. But um, subsequently to our last podcast last Friday, where I, I let all you guys and girls know that my girlfriend had tested positive for COVID and then we'd had to cancel our last minute um, Brad birthday holiday uh, to, to Amsterdam. Um, I then managed to catch COVID off of her over the weekend and subsequently, uh, throughout the week, I felt pretty pants. Um, had like a fever and stuff. I've definitely had COVID before as well. And I'm double jabbed. Double jabbed uh, and double COVID they did. Yeah, man. Just double, the double double. Double like trouble. Actually, <laughs> talking to double doubles, the double, I saw yesterday, the double Big Mac is back. So four patties. I'm like <laughs> a double Big Mac of COVID. <laughs> um, that's that's me. If I had to encapsula- encapsulate myself this week, so that the first the double double Big Mac. <laughs> the first thing cake. you need to do once you can leave the house, once isolation's over, is go go have a double double Big Mac. A double Big Mac. Yeah, well, and maybe tell them the story of why you're having a double Big Mac. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, hi, hi, Big, hi, uh, McDonald's. Yeah, I'm coming in. Uh, I've just recently <laughs> had COVID. <laughs> Thought I'd frequent your establishment, you know, just to sort of spread it around. They'd love that, wouldn't they, Jay? Yeah. Yep. 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 It's so popular. Um, yeah, I could. There's no point, though, man, because I can't taste it. So I've had my birthday this week um, in isolation with with my girlfriend, obviously, but she's working, so she was working on my birthday, and uh, I couldn't. Couldn't fucking taste anything. Had like a bloody fever going on. Um, we'd started watching Succession, which is awesome. It is awesome. But we're watching it together, so I couldn't even watch that on my birthday. And I, I, I couldn't even tell you what I did on my birthday, apart from... Oh, I think I made a, I made some food. I made... Because I, I just didn't have anything else to do. Um, I just made some. <laughs> See, like, I can't some, taste uh, it, but I'll make food anyway. Yeah, I made I made food because I thought this will make me feel slightly better about my situation. So I made a a bolognese, which we then ate, but I couldn't taste a fucking thing. So how was the texture? Yeah. Oh, the texture. I mean, you know, I'm a bit like a little bit. I don't want to say autistic, but I'm a little bit kind of like that with food and textures and stuff. Really weird me out. Like I don't like the texture of. Um, raw tomatoes i don't like it it's too squishy and too much resistance but then also wet and squishy not into it not into it but um i decided after like a day of not being able to taste anything that i was just going to eat only healthy stuff um so i've just been eating bananas pretty much that's not (laughs) i mean bananas are healthy but that's not a healthy diet just eating one thing yeah i know but I've sort of lost my appetite, so I've just eaten bananas. I'd made um, <laughs> some cottage pie, um, and I've just been eating bananas and cottage pie <laughs> the last few days. And I can't taste, can't taste anything. This, oh. this podcast is increasingly, it's like a, a Brad's fever dream. This yeah, is, this yeah, is yeah. how I see this content going. Uh, well, I tell you, if you want to get even more fever dreamy uh, and, and Brad madness, Johnny, this is, an, this is a thing that happened to me yesterday. 
a consequence of not being able to smell anything because of COVID. Um, I was whipping up a little bit of dinner in the kitchen and uh, my girlfriend came in and started talking to me. But I'd, I'd done this sort of trick that I'd learned off of Jamie Oliver, which was to turn your toaster on its side. Um, don't do this at home, folks. It's very dangerous. Turn your toaster on its side and then you can grill stuff in it. So I've I've observed Jamie grill cheese on toast in a toasty before, right? And I do it at home myself sometimes if I'm feeling a bit naughty. Um, so anyway, last night, not cheese on toast, but I put a bit of flat, uh, not flatbread, like a wrap, in there I cut it into four and then I put like a little quarter slice in each section and then my girlfriend came in distracted me um was talking to me about something you know nonsensical or not that important um anyway I forgot it was in there I turned around maybe a minute and a half later and when I when I turned around I could sort of feel like flicky lights behind me and there were I turned around and fucking flames out the top of the toaster <laughs> uh, <laughs> under the work surface. Uh, you know, it was like on my sideboard. Um, so under your cabinet. Probably a foot high flames <laughs> from the two thinnest bits of wrap you've ever seen. Um, they, they don't, obviously there's not a lot of water content in a wrap, presumably. And once the water content had gone, yeah, basically they'd bread just gone up like, isn't it? It had gone up like kindling, mate. And it was it was scary. <laughs> the whole room instantly filled with smoke and the flames were about two feet high. Um, I just looked at her and said, oh, shit, like, I, can't, I couldn't smell it. I don't know why she couldn't see it because she was well, looking I was gonna at say, me. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, it was Maybe so Maybe she weird. thinks that's how toasters work. Dude, it was really weird. It happened so fast. And then um, I was saying to her, give me a towel, give me a towel. And she just sort of like dawdled around for a bit and then... Um, found a tea towel, made it wet, and I just w- whipped it like a lasso at the top of this toaster to <laughs> frantically try and stop my house burning down. Um, this all happened within about 30 seconds. The room had filled with smoke to the point where I could hardly see her um, across the room. And then I ran out with this boiling hot toaster still on fire and put it outside my front door. Um, and just whipped it till it till it stopped burning, basically. Oh my god! <laughs> to... All because I couldn't smell, Jenny. If I if I, you know, you, it's not until you lose the faculty like smell that you realise I'd probably be dead by now if I couldn't smell stuff because I would have hundred percent burned myself down. It wasn't to the It wasn't all the, on the banners, you know, the public banners they put out there, like stay at home, wash your hands, protect the NHS, keep your toaster upright, you know. Yeah, these, exactly. these are it's dangerous times, and yeah, man. I think this this should be a warning to all of you: um, a to never go to Brad's house because you'll either be burned alive or get COVID, <laughs> <laughs> and b to use your toaster as the original instructions uh, tell you to vertically, not horizontally, exactly like a like a bad man. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Johnny, beer. What do you reckon? But yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's increasingly irrelevant. To be honest, to be a, certainly to us. <laughs> I do, I do feel like my life is spiraling down a, a bad hole at the moment. Everything seems to be going wrong, but we still, we still have beer. And you know what? You're having a pretty good beer week, aren't you? You've been promoting your book. You're, you're up and down the country. Where are you speaking to me from right now, Johnny? I'm excited. Literally right now, I am sat in the echoey corner of a Cave Direct warehouse, the the beer distributor I used to work for. Um, Yes. They're kindly hosting me for the day because I'm in Bristol for the next leg of my book tour. Uh, Going to Lost and Grounded tonight to taste through the four beers, meet some people, sign some books, give a little talk. Um, So, yeah, that's where I am right now, and I'll be off to Lost and Grounded in a couple of hours for the party to start. And then last night, I was at Day of Brewing, um, Amazing! I did a, a cheese and beer tasting. I cut up. Oh, let me tell you, never ever, along with mm. you, along with not putting your toaster on its side, <laughs> never yes. try to cut thirty portions of Stickleton cheese. Because is that the is that the wet one? No, no, it's not the oozy one. It, it's it's the blue cheese that's it, literally it's like wet sand when you try to cut it. It's the crumbliest <laughs> thing. Wow. Um, so I spent two hours battling with blue cheese and got my nice trousers that I'd I brought. I was like, I'll wear my nice trousers for the book tour, and now they're covered in cheese. 
Um, so these these are the replacement trousers that you replaced <laughs> after the green chinos exploding that hot sauce on you. <laughs> wow! So yeah. you've your two. This is this has been a bad trouser year for you, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, um, relatively to everybody else, I think I'm doing okay. You're doing all right. Yeah, you're doing I just right. have to keep replacing some Levi chinos. Um, but yeah. it's still it's still frustrating. It's not stuck in the burning house frustrating, but it's no. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit ridiculous, but yeah. So I've now got some slightly blue green chinos, um, but yeah. I mean, last night was amazing. We what was really lovely is is there were twenty uh, twenty eight people doing the tasting, and Blimey. probably about half of them had never heard of the Craft Beer Channel, which was amazing. Wow. Because a it meant they hadn't already bought my book, um, so I could sell it to them. But b it also meant you know we've 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 changed some minds, converted some people, hopefully, um, to to the cause of craft beer. You Channel. are like um, a beer evangelist, like a, one of these old like old a timey. Tele, yeah, like Conning a dude you go. Well, money. we we are televangelists together, but you are like now one of these sort of um, southern. Maybe, no, no, I don't want to say southern Baptist. I don't know what they're called. Evangelical guys that go. They go. Oh, they call revivals, aren't they? They go in. They go in tents and they move mm. the tents. Around to different small towns, like in the West in America. I'm a tent preacher, just, but for craft beer. You're like a tent preacher, but you're you're more of a like railway arch <laughs> slash industrial <laughs> unit beer preacher. I think <laughs> uh, Phil Collins is going to write a song about me any day now. Oh, oh I hope so. Beer That'd Jesus, be. he knows me. Cause beer Jesus is oh, Greg Cock, isn't it? The guy that founded Stone and now just makes a dick of himself around the world for a living. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, so you said you were being hosted by beer merchants. Does that mean you're? Are you sleeping in the warehouse tonight, Johnny? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> no, I'm I'm sleeping with my good friend Mike, who who still works for them. Not sorry, sleeping with him. No, sorry, yeah, that's not the right phrase. Yeah, to clarify that. that that's how on. I pay for the room. No, I'm I'm staying at his house. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, very Mike. much not Mike's sleeping a nice dude. with him. He, Hi, Mike. Uh, uh, he's not in the room anymore. I'm afraid, Brad. But oh, I'll, I'll tell him you said hi again. Um, okay. Cool. I'll tell him everybody who's listening said hi. Come on, Johnny, get this get this monster back on track. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so it was lovely to meet loads of people at day yesterday. I'm at Lost and Grounded tonight. Uh, you you might listen to this in time to go. Oh, I should come down. Uh, starts at four, goes on till uh, nine or ten o'clock, I think. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm at Elusive and Siren because they're in the same estate. So I'm going to be drinking some more of the uh, the green hot beer that I brewed with Elusive on cask, which I'm very excited about. Wow, that's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was so good at my book launch last week. Much, I mean, the cans are delicious, but on cask, it's it's another world, that green hot beer. Amazing. Um, and actually, this Sunday, we have the video of the brew day going live. I've ed- edited that together, um, so you can see that beer being brewed ready for next week. Um, Great stuff. Yeah, and then, uh, then I'm going to Siren, where you can get a free ticket, which gets you a free pour of the barley wine. Free barley wine, people. Holy shit! Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what is finer in this world than clicking a link and getting free barley wine. You're gonna have a riot on your hands if they give out <laughs> free barley wine. How much are they given? Only a small. Pour, oh, I'm I assuming think. it's probably half a can, probably a can between God, two kind damn, of thing. That's a lot of barley wine, though. Yeah, well, it's a it's a large glass of wine, is it? 250 mil ish, just under. Yeah, but it's only 8.6 percent. It's a very reasonable barley wine. Yeah, yeah, that's um, like a. Well, they say say that to the people like at my tasting dip or last something night. These days, mate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just an IPA. Um, yeah, so yeah, I've got a busy week, busy week, and a busy weekend. But um, it's been a lot of fun, and I love meeting people after so much time. I used to love going to events. You've been to a couple more than me recently, because because um, of because of the book. Um, but it's been really nice to get out there and meet people again. And so many people discovered us during lockdown. That's really nice as well. Um, so they're sort of new, new to the craft beer channel and sometimes new to the craft beer journey. So it's nice to change minds and um, right at the start of the journey. It's been really nice. Beautiful. I, I'm, I'm in love with the idea of you drinking that green hop on cask, Johnny. <laughs> Is that what you'll be thinking about tomorrow? Oh, always thinking about cask. Oh, I thought we were going to say thinking cask. about me. But yes, good segue. Well, Carry on. I was trying, Johnny, but then you've, <laughs> you've derailed me with your sexy chat, you and you know, I thought you were—I thought you were sleeping with Mike. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Talk, talking of cast, Johnny, 
This week's video was all about cask, wasn't it? It certainly was. It was all about the history of cask. Not like the literal history of cask, but mm. visiting a very historic brewery in Hook Norton, who, despite living not far away from it growing up, I had no idea how beautiful that brewery is. It is. There was a comment saying, like, this needs to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and I think they're right. I, I don't think they're wrong, to be honest. I think... The whole sort of campaign that we've been doing um, is is to highlight all these amazing, incredible bits of culture in our history that that is is still here, but it's you know some of it's on the precipice, um, mm-hmm. and we've got to, we've got to celebrate it. We've got to keep keep enjoying it, um, keep that culture alive, man. Like that is a ridiculously special place. Yeah. Um, and it is- just, I mean, the, the the drive in when we first went there, I don't think either of us were expecting it to be quite so magical. Wasn't it quite foggy? And we got there like ridiculously early in the morning. We, it, it was, it was, it, there was a beautiful sunrise as we arrived. That's what was going on. I've got, yeah, I've got a photo of the sun almost just coming up. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was an early yeah. start, and it was, it was really misty. Uh, misty on the yeah, drive, yeah, yeah. Yeah it, was- yeah, it was like it, we came out of like this sort of. Um, quite a narrow well very narrow hedge road path you know quite a long pathway you know past past their 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 pub at the end of the little lane but this this quite like mystical dark um foggy path and then at the end of it out of the the fog emerged this sort of crazy looking willy wonka um steampunk uh, chitty chitty bang bang looking <laughs> mental <laughs> like beer, or just a Victorian beer castle. <laughs> I mean, it looks it's a beer castle, mate. That's what it is. Beer, beer castle. castle. I like beef. that actually. Yeah, beer castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's. Um, I mean, I've never seen one like it. I've seen. I've seen a lot. I've never seen one like that. Mm. It's well. Special. I mean, I've seen one very similar, but there's only one one other one, and that's Harvey's. Um, okay, I've seen Harvey's yeah. too. But and, yeah. and Harvey's is you know from the outside it still looks incredibly traditional, but from the inside they replaced a lot of the equipment it's not necessarily brand spanking new but not a lot of that stuff is is from the victorian era whereas other than that new mash tun and that new um flow chiller pretty much all the equipment is original um, dude they've still got the bloody working steam engine yeah in the bowels of that place um, yeah no, no comments about the steam engine i thought that would be blowing people's minds i i think you chronically under under showed the porn the slow-mo shots of that steam engine that i took in there mate i said more steam engine <laughs> not no more cowbell i was like more steam engine when i, when I, I, I mean our feedback. podcast is so rarely about beer i thought we should probably focus on beer on the youtube channel <laughs> still <laughs> <laughs> i just love i just love steam engines i remember as a kid um every year i'd go to this steam fair with my dad and uh I, they're kind of amazing like you'd get these big um, <clears throat> steamroller sort of things that would would turn up, like probably 50 of them. Oh, Literally yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, they roll along the road. They're for flattening roads and shit. Whatever else they do, they've got like one big giant wheel thing on the back. And they yeah. go like five miles an hour. Um, and in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, uh, Christopher Lloyd gets it. flattened by one. He does, yeah. he does. And like I used to go and look at those when I was a kid and all of the <clears throat> the sort of almost like gypsy carnival carts that went with them and they had like a steam fair there where everything was powered by steam engine and they'd have uh, these steam organs that would play amazing sort of weird spooky um carnival music from like the victorian era it's very it just makes me think of that like the smells of like the charcoal and the kind of steam and the oil and everything it's quite quite a visceral kind of childhood memory for me so i was i just thought it was an amazing yeah, I think it's, Amazing place. it's something we slightly undersold. Like we talked about it right at the end, but the fact that these brewers, you know, they know how to fix this old equipment. They know how to run a steam engine as yeah. well as being incredible brewers. Like it is kind of remarkable, um, like the culture that's built up around that by the training that you have to have to work there. And, you know, when, um, when George was talking about, you know, we have manuals that tell you how to work it. They have to have it there for safety reasons. But in terms of actually, you couldn't read the manual and make it work. You'd have to read the manual and then spend a good couple of brews with somebody who knows what they're doing 
to actually you know get the best out of it it's a you know a totally different approach to the, the modern brew houses that we have now where you know still they're incredibly hard to use um and i'm not saying that any of the art has gone out of making beer as a, as a result but it's definitely in terms of the actual physical labor the technical knowledge the engineering knowledge you know most of that is is gone um and we need to preserve that so that when the apocalypse does come we can all go to hook norton and get the beer working dude that's it i, I mean the thing that <clears throat> blew me away was like talking about modern brewing techniques and, and the, the actual sort of brew kit they use and all the rest of it. Now we've got computer controlled stuff. They've literally, the cogs that turn the wheels were made of wood. Mm. Fucking wood. Like I, was, I pointed at this giant cog and said, what's that then? And he was like, oh, that's made of um, this like British hardwood called like ironwood or something. And they, they made all the cogs out of wood. It's like totally bonkers. Like that doesn't sound like a good idea, but it, but it works. Yeah, and I think and it's the thing they said easier and cheaper and quicker to replace as well when it does yeah, finally break. To replace it, that's yeah. it. You just replace one of the little bits of um, a fin on a cog or whatever. Yeah. But you know, like the fact that um, uh, he's, you know, the, the guys were like saying, if we, you know, if we, do, if we, I think they stopped using it a little bit over lockdown, and then when they came back, things had sort of stopped working. And this stuff needs to keep, you need to keep using it, otherwise it breaks. It's like a car that sits there for too long won't start because it's it's just things seize up. It's meant to be used. And that is, that's kind of the whole story of cask in my eyes. The more you sort of, the more you go for it, the more you drink it, the more we, we use it, the more, the fresher it is, the better it is. It raises, it raises everything. Bradley, you've redeemed the first 10 minutes of this podcast. What a wonderful monologue. You're totally right. It is reflected. You know, if we want cars to survive, we have to drink more of it. If we want this beautiful engineering to survive, we have to be using it. So That's it. drink more cask. Um, so to dive into the comments, uh, we had lots of lovely comments, but um, one that sort of stuck out to me is somebody who just quoted Brad quoted you back, Brad. He just said, like Brad said, a classic doesn't need to change. And I think that's an important thing that is is worth bearing in mind before next week's episode where we talk about the future and we visit two breweries doing lots of modern stuff like it's awesome that there's these modern breweries doing modern things but we have to you know i've watched excitedly but also slightly concernedly at lots of <laughs> modern breweries going into cask and, and doing cool things with it and i hope that we don't you know just start just buying the modern brewers um cask beers i hope that we can support the older guys that are, and, and girls that are still doing it um well, i feel like that that is it can only be a positive thing right because once you start um <clears throat> it's like vinyl isn't it it's just a different format like we sort of previously discussed but once you might maybe hear a uh, <clears throat> a new album on vinyl from taylor swift or something and you're like that sounds pretty good it sounds quite lively it's got a sort of energy to it a, a kind of you know something about it sounds different to the digital version um maybe i'll try a classic album now maybe i'll go and listen to neil young uh, after the gold rush or whatever and you're like fuck me it sounds so incredible on vinyl slash cask so now i'm gonna get into the back catalog and you're gonna go and try uh timothy your landlord and your your London Pride and all the rest of it. You're going to get in there. You're going to try your old hooky. And um, I think that could be a little gateway, like a gateway drug, Johnny. Mm -hmm. These new cool breweries. Absolutely. Coming and out that, with their that's what it has been for us. You know, we got back into bitters, I think, because of Five Points Best. Yes. And now we're going to Hook Norton and Gads and all these guys that make really traditional beer as a result of that. So it's definitely something that can happen. And that's why it's brilliant to have these modern breweries doing it. And I just, yeah, I just want to make sure that that journey is 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 going to happen for everybody because some of the breweries that we have are you know the hook norton aren't the only really beautiful old school brewery in the uk there'll be lots of different ones um outside of harvey's as well that you know they're different but they're still traditional and beautiful in their own way and ge genuinely i really hope that on the craft beer channel as well we go out there and find some more stories like that because i think this is one of the best videos we've ever made and i think oh. it's one of the most important ones we've made um so i want to make more like this tell some more stories that are you know a little bit forgotten i think by by us and by people like us who got into beer in the last sort of decade or so 
that's it and it's it it's it's a kind of a travesty really although i guess you know it was obvious that we were going to cover the stuff we've been covering because it's it's what what's kind of um you know the new you want the new hot hotness that's out every week but once you kind of it's it's like you know the the beer wheel of life when you your taste buds get weary and you're like i just want to drink lager now it's kind of like that where we've gone right all these different formats and different styles blah 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 where did we start off this journey cask like for me and you both growing up we drank cask when mm-hmm. we were younger men and then we kind of exploded into all this other stuff but it's it's a nice full circle thing i think for us to be making these stories now um it's just wonderful like you man i just i there are so many more stories we need to tell uh around all this stuff and i think if one thing good has come out of covid it's it's us um being able to tell these stories in our own country about our sort of traditional brewing yeah it's forced us to look closer to home a little bit hasn't it yeah 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 because before you know we were like let's go out to the west coast let's go to wherever we just you know it's it's kind of like you know these adventures were out there all around the world but we kind of we kind of didn't neglect but we we had these amazing gems sat here that we didn't get round to yet, and it's it's let us do that. So I'm thankful for that. Me too, buddy, and I'm glad you can say that while literally suffering from COVID. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll be we'll be with you on Sunday for the upload of the Brew Day uh, down at Elusive, which is a really fun video where there's a lot of driving involved, but also a lot of hot porn. Um, and then next week we're talking about the future of Cask Ale on the channel uh, by visiting Abbeydale and Darkstar so look forward to that it's a really great in-depth episode it's currently sat at about 45 minutes so I've got a serious editing job to do uh, on Monday and Tuesday so pray for me then Um, pray for Brad now and keep your toasters vertical The Bubble and Friday 5pm podcast are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer channel. You can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum. A positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer.